Hey everybody, I'm Beth Davis and welcome to another Teachable Tuesday. So happy to be with you as always. It is a joy to be in God's Word and to be with you in community in the Word. So if you've got a Bible, grab it. Uh, we're going to dig in in just a minute. But first, let's pray together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come Holy Spirit. Oh, come Lord Jesus. Father, we turn to you. We fix our eyes on you. We return your gaze, God, because you're always looking at us. I thank you for your goodness, your love, your provision and protection. I thank you, God, for who you are. And I pray that in this brief time together, that you would reveal who you are in a deeper way, that you would speak truth to each of our hearts and convict us of your personal love for each and every one of us. So Father, we thank you and we love you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Guys, have you ever been jealous? Me too. <laughs> Me too. I remember uh, many years ago, in my early 20s, I really had an issue with jealousy. In particular, I had an issue with being happy for other people when they got what I wanted. And I remember really bringing this before the Lord and um, studying a lot about jealousy and desiring very much to root this out of my heart and out of my life. And I began to practice um, a discipline of celebrating other people's blessings. And I say a discipline very honestly. It was hard work to be happy for people sometimes. It's especially difficult at times to, to rejoice with people and for people in the age of social media. And so I began to make this practice, this discipline of every time I saw good news on Facebook or Instagram, even if there was that tinge of jealousy, uh, even if there was that little unpleasant feeling, I disciplined myself to like every photo to like every status, to heart every engagement picture or baby announcement or wedding album. And then when I got good at that, I began to comment on them. And do you know what happened? There was a genuine love and joy that welled up within me. Because the reality was, I wanted my friends to be happy. I just wanted to be happy too. Does that make sense? So um, that worked for me for many, many years until joy, rejoicing um, in other people's blessings really became habit. It became the default reaction for me. But you know, in recent weeks, I've had a bit of a resurgence of jealousy and I've been very disappointed and, and confused by these unpleasant feelings that come up. But as I brought that to the Lord in prayer, and I began to pray once again about it, to study scripture, to read about jealousy, I found that this jealousy really reveals a deeper belief system I have about who God is. You see, before I was going after the behavior and that's well and good. We need to discipline our behavior. We have um, the fruit or we have the gift of the Holy Spirit. We have self-control. So we can do hard things behaviorally, but God wanted to get after this deeper belief in the depths of my heart, a wrong belief system about who he is and how he loves me. Because at the root of it, the symptom was jealousy, but at the root of it, I was believing that God doesn't have enough for me. That's what jealousy says. God doesn't have enough for me. So when you have these bigger issues come up or even a resurgence of um, a, a sin or a problem that you thought you'd conquered in the past, maybe a place to begin is asking yourself, what am I believing about the Father? What am I believing about who he is? So when I found myself asking these questions again, right? Like, 
When's it going to be my turn? What about me, Lord? And gosh, I was just even embarrassed thinking and praying these things. But when I, when I brought them to the Lord, I brought them out into the light, rather than trying to modify my behavior, correct myself, tell myself I shouldn't feel that way, go back to liking and commenting and blessing. When instead I brought that tender place before the Lord to say, what about me? Don't you love me? Don't you want to bless me the way you're blessing these friends that I love? What I found that I was believing God didn't have enough for me, that God will run out of good things for me. I was believing that God is limited. And at the heart of it, at the heart of it, the Lord revealed that I was believing he doesn't love me as much as he loves other people. He doesn't love me enough. And you know what those those feelings and those fears and those wrong belief systems say? They believe a poverty mindset. I was living from a poverty or scarcity mindset that there's a limited amount of resources. God has a limited amount of blessings and graces and uh if I'm not in line quick enough, if God doesn't give it to me, God is going to run out. He doesn't have enough for me. So now with this revelation, armed with this revelation about these fearful um, beliefs, about this uh, scarcity mindset that I had, what did I do? Well, the next step when you've identified those, that poverty mindset is to bring it before the Lord and to repent of the wrong belief. It is well and good to repent of a behavior, of a sin. There is grace in that. But if we want to truly root out a sin from our lives, we've got to repent about these wrong beliefs we have about who God is. So God, I, I'm sorry. Forgive me that I don't think that you have enough for me. God, I'm, I'm sorry. Forgive me that I believe that you'll run out of good things for me. God, forgive me that I've believed that you are limited. You're not limited in your word. You show me how good you are. God, forgive me that I've been believing that you don't love me enough. Because those are, are wrong beliefs, wrong mindsets. And now, after we've repented of those wrong beliefs, we've got to speak the truth of who God is. God, you are generous. God, you are extravagant. God, you love me perfectly and completely. You love me eternally. And what really makes these declarations about the character of God stick, what really gives them staying power in the depths of our hearts and what rewires our brains to believe who God is, is to read and declare his word over our lives. Flip with me, if you will, to um, St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 3. Just a brief verse um, that I want to encourage you to camp out in, to pray with, to, to memorize, if you can. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly, far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. To him who is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask for or imagine. That's who God is. That's who he really is. We don't have to live from a place of, of fear or anxiety about God running out or forgetting about us, forgetting to bless us. Because God can give us abundantly far more than we can even ask for or imagine. Think of the wedding feast at Cana. Jesus um, and the bride and groom were coming to the end of their uh, wedding feast. Days long celebration of their marriage. And they, were, they ran out of wine. And did Jesus give them enough just to get through the night? No! He gave them extravagantly, like an embarrassment of wine. More wine than could have been drunk by the guests in what little time was left. And not only did Jesus give in quantity, he gave in quality. He gave abundantly far more than they could have asked or imagined. And that's what he wants to do for you too, friend. If you're 
in a place now of, of wondering and questioning, when is it going to be me? I see God taking care of other people. It, it seems like things just work out for other people, but it doesn't seem to work out for me. Doesn't he hear my prayers? Doesn't he care? Doesn't he see me? The answer is yes. He loves you far more than you can ask or imagine. He's a God of extravagance, a God of abundance, a God of generosity. So what if, what if we believed that when God blessed other people, when God gave them what we wanted, what if we began to believe and say to ourselves, thank you, Lord. I know that blessing, their blessing, is a down payment on mine. I know that you blessing my friend, my sister, my family member, my coworker, I know, God, that that's a down payment on my blessing. I know that you're just showing off because you can do abundantly far more than I can ask for or imagine. And isn't that a beautiful posture of openness and expectation and hope? And I pray that the Spirit in this moment, Holy Spirit, that you would stir up expectation and hope, that you would stir up our belief in who God actually is and cast out our fears. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, would you send your Holy Spirit to enlighten uh, the depths of our hearts, enlighten um, lies, fears that we may be living out of, that may be shaping our worldview. And I ask you now, very gently, Lord, to come in and to begin to rewire our brains, to rewire our attitudes and our thinking, that you would help us to make the switch, God, from a poverty mindset to an abundance mindset, to believe that there is enough, more than enough for me and for you. So Father, thank you for who you really are. Thank you that you can't wait to bless us and that your timing is perfect. We place our trust in you and we thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, for the down payment that you've made on our blessing in the lives of those we love. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Bless you, friends. Thank you so much for being with me here today on Teachable Tuesday. I would love to uh, be with you again next week, same time, same place, and grab a Bible, bring a Bible to work if you're watching at work or if you're um, praying along with us in the evening at your prayer time. Always have the word close at hand because the Lord is, uh, his word is spirit and life. So God bless you. We love you. See you next time. Bye.